Now, I remember when ExpressLRS first appeared and the general opinion was it's great to have a completely open, high refresh radio link with long range reliability and low latency that runs on various hardware platforms. But at the same time, the thinking was maybe it's a bit too early to use and wait until it matures a bit. Well, look at things now. It's been hugely supported by manufacturers and adopted by the RC community. And the first release candidate, ExpressLRS V3.5, is now available for testing. And as always, there's a steady stream of new features and bug fixes. Now, I'll run through what I think are the important things in this new release a little bit later, but I wanted to answer all the questions I've had about Gemini mode. As I said months ago, I think Gemini mode will become the standard that will eventually be adopted by manufacturers. I mean, anyone doing long range these days is using diversity receivers for reliability. So why not for the transmitter and telemetry? And that's what Gemini mode is all about. Hello, and welcome to the Whirly Black channel. So if you've got a single ELRS receiver like this Beta FPV ELRS Lite, you've got a single receiver circuit and a single antenna. In this case, it's a little ceramic antenna. So when a packet is sent from your transmitter, it only has one chance to receive it. So if there's any interference along the way or the distance is just too much, it won't be received. And even if you put a couple of antennas and separate RF amplifiers on here, you still only get one chance to receive a single packet. A true diversity receiver like this Beta FPV Super D1 has got two separate receivers and RF amplifiers on here and two separate antennas. So there's a better chance of receiving the packets. Plus, you can mount your antennas like this to improve things even more. You're basically moving the null points around. So even though we have a much better chance of receiving it, basically we're still only sending a single packet. In version 3, ELRS introduced something called Deja Vu Diversity, which essentially allows the transmitter to send multiple data packets. D mode sends a thousand packets a second or one kilohertz data rate. And if you set it to D500, you get the packet transmitted twice. So you've got an even better chance of receiving it. If one of those met some interference along the way, the other one will be used and it's good. And if you set it to D250, for example, it will send it four times. And not only does it send it multiple times, it frequency hops and sends each data packet on a slightly different frequency. And that means you've got a very good chance of receiving something and your link quality will be close to or at 100% most of the time. And it'll all be insulated from any interference. Now this is great, it's a great idea, but there is a downside. The more often you choose to repeat the duplicate data packets, the lower the data transmission rate. So for example, at D500, if you're transmitting data twice, it's only being transmitted at a data rate of 500 Hertz rather than 1000 Hertz. But with Gemini mode and suitable transmitter hardware that's got two transmitters or diversity transmitters, ELRS will send a data packet simultaneously from each transmitter to each receiver at different frequencies. So as well as diversity transmitting, it's also frequency hopping. And this effectively eliminates the data frequency reduction that you get with D mode by transmitting the data in parallel. And you've got all the improvements associated with frequency hopping. Does that make any sense? I've tried to explain this in practical use and benefits terms rather than how it does it. And you will be hearing more and more about Gemini mode this year as it gets more widely adopted. 
Anyway, on to the first release candidate for Express RRS 3.5, which has just been made available. Well, first up, this is the last release to support STM32 hardware, which includes some existing manufacturer's hardware, significantly FreeSky. And I'll leave you to draw your own conclusions on that one, but do let me know your thoughts in the comments. Although the release notes say this is only a minor version release, the two big and important things as far as I'm concerned are the native comms Mavlink support and FSK with fast forward error correction. With native Mavlink support, version 3.5 enables direct communication between Mavlink compatible devices. And this allows you to monitor real-time telemetry in Mission Planner, upload waypoint missions, adjust parameters mid-flight, and control your plane or wing all through the same low latency RC link. Now, Mavlink RC has been independently tested and proven to provide reliable, stable communication over distances up to 126 kilometers without a failsafe, which is a massive thing for Mavlink users. The other biggie is they've introduced FSK support with new K modes for both sub gigahertz, that means 900 megahertz, and 2.4 gigahertz bands. The maximum packet rate for the sub gigahertz band has been significantly increased from 200 hertz to an impressive 1000 hertz or 1 kilohertz. Additionally, fast forward error correction, FEC as you'll hear it being called, has been added to the 2.4 gigahertz band, which will be a huge benefit in noisy race environments by making the packets more resilient. Amongst other notable mentions, they've improved backpack, so it now forwards telemetry data in a range of different flavors, including Mavlink via Wi-Fi, and this is especially useful for complex setups where telemetry data is crucial. There's loads of other stuff they've added and fixed, but I think these are the most significant. And if you want to read more, I've put a link to these release notes and the download in the description below, and you can peruse them at your leisure. It never fails to be exciting times for Express LRS, and it just goes to show that progress in open source projects is just so much better than closed source. Feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you think. And if you've got any questions, fire away and I'll do my best to answer them. And your comments are always appreciated. Give this a thumbs up if you found it useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.